Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about freight fraud that you might run into on trucking load boards. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about this freight fraud. It's been you know all over trucking load boards it's uh you know, it, it's, it's, it's an issue with, you know, truck scammers and cargo theft. In fact, according to truckstop.com, freight fraud has actually increased by 400% between uh, the fourth quarter of 2021 and a fourth quarter of 2022. So a year's worth of data uh, increased by 400%. It's a, it's a major issue. In fact, it's the highest level since 2004, which is uh, coincidentally the, the very year that they started tracking uh, this data in the first place. So generally it falls into a couple of different categories like uh, double brokering, freight fraud, and that's basically uh, when you're a carrier and uh, you receive a call or, or, or you call on a, on a load and uh, turns out to be that it's actually not a broker. It's because what ends up happening is that uh, you have a fraudster who contacts a real broker with a real load. They act as a carrier. They get all the information. They double broker the load to you by acting like a broker. You take the load and you know you drive the load. You you know spend on a diesel your time. Your you take on the liability and you know you basically do what you're supposed to do as a carrier. Then you know at some point they change the delivery destination. They say hey listen uh, some things have changed. You gotta you know drop it here. We'll still pay you your money. Everything's great. But don't don't worry about it. So you, you go over, you, you deliver the load, everything seems fine, legitimate, but actually it's cargo theft. And uh, by changing the destination, they empty out your trailer, you never get paid. Uh, you know, sometimes you go all the way pretty much to the final destination city and then somewhere there, uh, you know, conveniently where their warehouses are located is where they uh, change the delivery destination or maybe halfway through or somewhere else. And uh, ultimately it results in cargo theft and hurts a lot of parties uh, and with the fraudsters getting paid on, uh, you know, because they, they, they steal the freight, right? Now, then you also have load fishing, which is another type of freight fraud. Uh, that you generally involves more of email communication, but it does happen quite uh, frequently, you know, with the advent of the internet and not having to actually have load boards. Uh, you know, the the load fishing process is a little bit different. So you have company name, uh, company names, and what they do uh, with phishing is they take a name that's very very similar, like an email address through like a Yahoo account or a Gmail or a Hotmail or something like that. They open up another account, uh, they fake a bunch of documents for a, already a, a known company. And you know they might make a minute change uh, in the name or something like that, uh, or or they or they create a, a, an account through Gmail, or they you know do something that's very very similar that may not be noticed. And what they do is they basically do get the details on a specific load from a specific broker, and uh, you know a driver shows up at the pickup location on a, on a you know truck and a trailer. They, they pick up the load, uh, you know no one knows what's actually going on, and that load basically gets uh, taken somewhere else and you know gets dismantled, and the freight gets uh, you know taken up and sold. On the black market. Those are the your your lookalike uh, fraudsters, if you will, because they're they're basically using a known company and they're they're defrauding the brokers by uh, making it seem like they're dealing with someone they're actually not dealing with, right? So those are just two of the ways that uh, you know freight fraud is spreading throughout the United States, and ultimately, you know, you, you end up with an unpaid carrier uh, with a lot of uh, you know expenses that they've incurred. There's uh, the paid uh, truck scammer, uh, which is a real big deal because in either scenario they end up walking away uh, pretty from from these types of situations then there you know potential damages to the shipper there are potential damages to the broker in case you know a lawsuit um, you know arise from all of this because ultimately if the carrier is involved and he actually drives the freight he could have a point that hey listen I spent the money I've spent my time I try to do legitimate business. They might hire uh, an attorney, a, a lawyer, or they might hire a, a, you know, a collection agency to collect on them. And ultimately, it might end up being that uh, you know, the, the, the brokers end up paying twice or the, the shipper ends up paying twice on this. And then, of course, there's the customers themselves who are waiting for the products to arrive so they could you know, sell it at their retail location or restaurants or whatever it might be. They're also certainly uh, hurt. So, 
uh, you know, unfortunately, the load board fraud is often unpunished. It goes uh, unpunished and uh, you know, you might think, why is that? But the, the reality is that it's because of the responsibility of the FBI, because of all these uh, different jurisdictions that they cross, the different international borders that they often uh, cross, because a lot of these fraudsters aren't even in the United States. They're actually sitting pretty somewhere uh, internationally. So you have all these borders, and so ultimately it becomes the responsibility of the FBI, which would have been fine, but the problem is, and ultimately the problem is that it's uh, an issue of large volumes of small crimes, right? Most loads, if you look at them, they're between a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, right? What you get off of load boards or whatever deals you might get on a single transportation of a single truck load, right? And so it's a, it's a few thousand bucks, but you have a huge volume because the trucking industry is nearly a trillion dollars a year. So you have this huge volume of fraud and you know, the FBI can't just be jumping around at you know, hundreds of thousands of, of cases that are all over the place for a few thousand bucks involving uh, you know, people from all over the world and you know different shippers and receivers and different uh, scenarios and different cases so that's why it goes largely unpunished plus you have the issue of having to deal with a jury of uh, of your peers right try explaining uh, the entire situation of what a broker is a freight forwarder a carrier all the responsibilities of the legalese of the situation uh, you know the uh, all, all the things that are involved in a in, in a single uh, action of transporting goods uh, you know, in the trucking industry. So it makes it doubly difficult and ultimately this is the reason why these scammers walk away. Uh, oftentimes they, they, they just goes unpunished, no one ever knows, they you know, walk away scot-free basically. So it's a tough situation, things uh, have seemed to have gotten worse. We don't have any of the latest information for, for example, uh, the majority of 2022, for example, or even partial information for 2023. Uh, but nonetheless, that information will come out, and if truckstop.com is uh, reporting on this, then certainly DAT certainly will, and other load boards that are prominent out there uh, are going to report on that as well. But ultimately, it's a big problem. We'd love to hear from you guys in a comment section below. If you had some examples or some of this kind of stuff has happened to you, please do leave us a comment. Uh, a lot of the folks in the community will definitely would love to hear uh, from you in the comments. And uh, if you haven't done so, please make sure to smash the like button. I'm going to switch over to camera. We're going to look over the loads that we booked for our customers. And I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. We got vans and reefers this week. Some folks did quite, quite well. We're going to start off with one of them. It's a solo reefer coming out of Lake City, South Carolina, going to Beaver Dam, Kentucky. It's a dry load, 43,000 pounds of clean plastic. So the reefer stayed off on this one. 596 miles, booked at 1,200 bucks, got them 201 a mile. Then Murfreesboro, Tennessee to Hickory, North Carolina with a 7,000 pound super light load uh, of uh, big goods. Negative 10 on a reefer, 369 miles, booked at 1,500 bucks, got them 407 a mile. Then Monroe, North Carolina to Pottsville, uh, PA, 40,000 pound load of refrigerated goods, 20, 30 degrees on a reefer, 557 miles, booked to 1,700 bucks, got them 305 a mile. Then Brainsville, uh, Pennsylvania to Cranberry, New Jersey with a 44,000 pound load of water. So another dry load, reefer stayed off on that one as well. Short run, 93 miles, booked at 450 bucks, got them 484 a mile. And then they finished off with, a, with a, basically it's a three pick, one dropper, still a short run. Uh, Carteret, New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey, and a Newark, New Jersey picks uh, going to York, Pennsylvania with a 29,000 pound load of frozen seafood with negative 10 on a reefer. Uh, we're talking 190 miles, booked at 620, uh, 25 miles, got them 329 a mile. An excellent job, solo reefer running seven days on a road Tuesday to Tuesday. Ended up uh, grossing $5,475 in gross. Ran 1,805 loaded miles, so not a ton of miles, but did that at uh, 303 per loaded mile average. An excellent, excellent job uh, for this driver. Next, we got ourselves a dry van. Uh, so it was supposed to originally come out of uh, Morgantown, North Carolina, and uh, the load was going to Fomble, uh, Pennsylvania. Ended up being a Tonu, so we did collect $250 for the driver on that one and ended up picking up a load out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, going to Willoughby, Ohio with a 30,000 pound load of general merchandise. Uh, 587 miles, booked at 1,200 bucks, got him 204 a mile. Then Lithonia, Ohio to Monroe, Michigan with a 20,000 pound light load of aluminum. 202 miles, booked at 500 bucks, got him 248 a mile. Then 
Detroit, Michigan to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, that one was a 44,000 pound load of scrap, uh, non-ferrous metal, 687 miles, booked at $1,254. That got him a buck 83. Then uh, Cowpen, South Carolina to Munster, Indiana with a super, super light load, 7,000 pounds of plastic caps, 698 miles, booked at 1250, got him a buck 79 on that one. They finished off with Chicago, Illinois, going to Glen Burnie, Maryland, which was a 35,000 pound load of miscellaneous products or FAK. Uh, 705 miles booked at 1800 bucks got them 255 a mile so sometimes you do have to uh, move to a different market and things will improve and this is a solo driver uh, dry van running seven days Friday to Friday ended up uh, grossing six thousand two hundred fifty four dollars ran uh, 2879 loaded miles at an average of 217 per loaded mile average an excellent job regular regular dry van uh, next we got a reefer coming out of Jessup Maryland going to uh, Miramar Florida it's a 42,000 pound load of refrigerated goods, zero degrees on a reefer, 1,071 miles, booked at 1,500 bucks. That got him a dollar 40 coming into Miramar. Uh, you know, right now is definitely a good season in Florida, so it makes sense that they're paying less to get in there. Brokers are catching on. Uh, then LaBelle, Florida, going to Brundage, Alabama. It's a full, uh, full load to scale of watermelon, which makes sense, running 52 to 60 degrees on a reefer, 542 miles, booked that one at 1,700 bucks, got him 314 a mile. Then Samson, Alabama to Cleveland, in Tennessee with a 44,000 pound uh, load of uh, peanuts. It's negative 10 on a reefer, 361 miles, booked at a thousand bucks, got them 277 a mile. Then Collinsville, uh, Alabama to Butner, North Carolina. It's a 5,000 pound light load of uh, frozen chicken at negative 10 on a reefer, 500 miles on a dot, booked at 1,200 bucks, got them an easy 240 a mile. They finished off with a one pick three dropper coming out of, uh, uh, looks like uh, Whitset, North Carolina, going to Kernersville, North Carolina, Hickory, North Carolina in the final in uh, another uh, hickory, so two drops in hickory. And uh, ultimately, it's a 37,000 pound load of avocados, ban uh, bananas, and limes running 38 degrees on a reefer. Super short, 112 miles, booked at 650 bucks, got them an easy 580 per mile out and staying in North Carolina. So they ran Friday to Friday, seven days, grossed $6,050, ended up running 2,586 loaded miles at an average of 236 uh, or 234 per loaded mile average. So quite, quite well there. Next, we got ourselves another drive in coming out of Omaha, Nebraska, going to Bell, Missouri. It's a 35,000 pound load of pallets, 379 miles, booked at 800 bucks, got them 211 a mile. Then uh, Pontoon Beach, Illinois, going to uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's a load of uh, rubber, it's clean rubber, brand new stuff, through 34,000 pounds, 520 miles, booked at 1,000 bucks, got them $1.92. Then out of uh, Messine, Wisconsin, to Shell Rock, Iowa, they took another uh, rubber load, again, clean, brand new stuff, this time 44,000 pounds. It's 258 miles, booked at 900 bucks, got them 349 a mile this time. Then Lime Spring, Iowa to Fayette, Ohio with a 43,000 pound load of animal feed supplements, 554 miles booked at 1200 bucks there, got them 217 a mile. Then Toledo, Ohio to uh, Bettendorf, Iowa with a 44,000 pound load of dry goods, 391 miles booked at $760, uh, got them $1.94 and they finished off with Muscatine, uh, Iowa to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. It's a dry load, 42,000 pounds, 1,008 miles booked at 2,000 bucks, got them just shy of two uh, two bucks a mile a dollar 98 and that was that it was seven days uh, on the road monday to monday gross six thousand six hundred and sixty dollars uh, ran 3,110 loaded miles at an average of 214 per loaded mile average an excellent job next we got a reefer this one's a little different because they took just two loads. Uh, Tars, Pennsylvania to Las Vegas, Nevada, one pick, one drop. It was a, a dry load, 44,000 pounds. So the reefer stayed, on, uh, stayed off on that one. Lots of miles, 2,202 miles booked at 3,100 bucks, was $1.41 a mile. Then they came out of uh, Cedar City, Utah to Portland, Oregon. Another uh, longer run, 42,000 pound load of chilled food, 35 to 40 degrees on a reefer, 972 miles booked at $3,000, got them 309 per mile. And uh, that was ultimately it you know they ran actually for just six days Friday to Thursday and ended up grossing sixty one hundred dollars in six days ran thirty one hundred seventy four loaded miles and did that an average of dollar ninety two per loaded mile average uh, then we got a dry van coming out of uh, Aurora Colorado to Sioux Falls South Dakota with a forty five thousand pound load of consumer goods and beverages a heavier load six hundred twenty three miles booked at nine hundred fifty five miles uh, nine hundred fifty five dollars got him a buck fifty three there but made up the difference on the way back out of uh, Silby Iowa going 
or Sibley, Iowa, going to Greeley, Colorado. Light load, paid much better. 7,000 pounds of uh, pipe and pipe fittings. 619 miles booked at 1,560 bucks. Got them 252 a mile. Then right out of Greeley, zero deadhead to Hermiston, Oregon with a 36,000 pound load of pet food. 1,030 uh, miles booked at 2,000 bucks. Got them $1.94. An excellent job. This is really tough coming out of Colorado. They did a great job going in. Good money coming out. Good money. Did a great, great job. They finished off with Cove, Oregon, going to Eugene, Oregon. Quick little run. 44,000 pound load of bottled water. 384 miles booked at 850 bucks. Got them 221 a mile. And that's it. Tuesday to Tuesday, seven days. Ended up grossing $5,365. Ran 2,656 loaded miles at an average of 202 per loaded mile average. And we're going to finish off with our last drive in out of uh, High, Point, uh, High Point, North Carolina, going to Rapid City, South Dakota. It's a 30,000 pound load of dry goods, 1,627 loaded miles, uh, running a 3150. Got them a buck 94 on that one. Then they did a one pick three dropper out of Rapid City, South Dakota, going to Rochester, Minnesota, Rockford, uh, Minnesota, and the final in uh, uh, St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin. It's a 44,000 pound load of auto parts, 761 miles, booked at 1,400 bucks, got them $1.84 on that one. And then they finished off with uh, Woodville, Wisconsin, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, with a 9,000 pound super light load electric motor uh, load, 830 miles, booked at 1,710 bucks, got them 206 a mile, which finished off their week, seven days on a road, Tuesday to Tuesday, grossed $6,260 in seven days, uh, ran 3,218 loaded miles at an average of buck 95. So as you can see guys, the money is there, it can be made. We got reefers making over three bucks a mile. Yeah, they didn't run a lot of miles. That's not a bad thing though. They're running very efficiently, still ended up bringing in just under $5,500. We got other guys bringing in over $6,000. Very healthy income, very efficient uh, you know, runs. In many cases you can see very light loads. That's what you get with working with uh, you know, dedicated, very experienced dispatchers who have been through the ups and downs of different markets through uh, you know good markets and bad markets not just guys who are practicing on you who are uh, only able to make it happen if the markets are super hot in those scenarios you're not really making top dollar anyway they're just skimming off the top and you know they're the only ones who are making out with the top dollar you know you want to work with experienced dispatchers and know what they're doing same thing with our lease on owner op uh, position so you know if you're a lease on owner operator we can certainly help you out you know if you're paying too much for the services if you're not making this kind of money that we're describing during a tough tough market you know if they're charging you too much if uh all sorts of things could be the case. You know, same thing with, uh, you know, if you have your own MC authority, maybe you're not making top dollar. Maybe you're getting, uh, you know, lower quality loads. Maybe you're sitting around too much. Maybe you're being charged too much. There's a lot of things to explore here. So definitely do so by calling or texting us at 801-448-6363. You can also go to our website at aftdispatch.com. And until next week, guys, stay healthy, be wealthy, take care.